Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all shapes, sizes, and colors, do we have a video for you today. Today our video is going to be talking about our different inverters that you see here in front of me and what is the best inverter for you. All right, so what is the best inverter for you and what are the differences between each inverter? What are the different kinds of loads that we have with each inverter is kind of what we're going to be talking about today. I got three inverters sitting in front of me. Uh, I've got a simple Ames Power 2000 watt high frequency off grid inverter. And here I have a Solar Jenny 1000 watt low frequency inverter charger. And over here I have another Solar Jenny 2000 watt uh, high frequency pure sine wave inverter. All three inver inverters are pure sine wave. Um, but all three inverters have a big huge difference between them. The standard 2000 watt Ames power inverter over here is just a very simple off-grid pure sine wave high frequency inverter which will only do a resistive load for the most part. It'll do a small inductive load but mostly it is for resistive, uh, resistive loads. The low frequency inverter charger will do a couple of different things. One, it'll provide you pow enough power and surge for a inductive load and also um, it will charge your battery bank through your AC power if you're connected to your AC grid. Um, the unit over here, the other Solar Jenny 2000 watt is a high frequency pure sine wave inverter. It is just a simple off-grid inverter. It will not charge batteries uh, any more than the Ames inverter will, but it will also run an inductive load up to 4000 watt surge for five seconds. So it'll run 2000 watts full inductive, meaning, uh, well, we'll come back to that. So it'll run a full 2000 watt inductive load and it'll surge up to 4000 watts for five seconds. So this 2000 watt high frequency standalone uh, off grid inverter will smoke the Ames inverter, like just hands down. And we're gonna show you guys in a video the differences between these uh, inverters after this video. All right, so I'm talking about resistive loads and inductive loads and what does all this mean? Okay, it's very simple. Um, a hair dryer, um, let's say a drill, a vacuum cleaner, a refrigerator, an air conditioner, um, a saw, anything with a motor basically that draws amperage is going to be considered an inductive load. And not to get into the science too deep, haters don't come and kick my butt on this, but that's basically an inductive load. What is a resistive load? A resistive load is a light bulb basically, or anything that draws heat, So, um, but without a motor. A hair dryer is an inductive load, but it's considered a resistive load, so it's kind of a mixed subject. Um, but we're not going to get too involved in that. Anyways, we're just going to stay on subject. So once again, a resistive load is basically just a light bulb or something that produces some heat without a motor. And an inductive load is something that has a motor that draws amperage and has a more higher current uh, flow. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an electrical specialist like that, but I understand these things and so I'm kind of giving them to you. So what inverter should you buy? Well, if you want to run an air conditioner and charge your battery bank and run heavy duty tools all the time, then you want a low frequency inverter. They're much heavier and they cost more money, but it'll charge your batteries as long as you're connected to the grid or an AC power source, whether it be a generator or something else. Um, if you're just gonna run some light bulbs and that's it, or some low loads, then you can just go with a standard high frequency inverter. It's very simple. If you're gonna run an inductive load of any kind, uh, but you don't want a huge low frequency inverter, then you can get by with our Solar Jenny 2000. And we'll also have this in the 3000 and the 1000 range. And yes, these will be going into our solar generators. Um, and the reason they're going in there is because of they handle inductive load. Now, everybody else's solar generators out on the market today are basically a resistive load. There are a few that will handle an inductive load, but once again, they only surge for a fraction of a second as to where this guy surges for five seconds. Now, the simple math is this, good, better, best. So good, better, best. There's also inverters that have a solar controller built into them. So not only could you charge via AC power, you can charge through your solar power directly through the inverter. Um, I tend to stay away from those because they can be a little sketchy fotchy and if one thing goes down and you gotta get it repaired, then you've lost everything. So, um, but they are available out there. Um, so I guess in closing, you know, the best thing is to decide what you need, what your power needs are, um, how much load you're going to be running, and that's how you'll make your choice of inverter. 
Now, some people th say, you know what, I only got, you know, 2,000 watts of power, so I'm just going to get a 2,000 watt inverter. And I'm going to say, don't do that. If you've got a 2,000 watt load all the time, then you're going to want a 4,000 watt inverter. And because you don't want to run your inverter at 100% load all the time. Now, if you're going to use it every day, you definitely want a 4,000 watt inverter. Uh, and you probably want a low frequency inverter. And if you're just running a little bit in a motorhome or tailgating or something, then you can get by with a high frequency inverter if you're not running those inductive loads. So find out what your power needs are, find out what amperages you're going to be using, and that will determine on which type of the three of these inverters that you want to get. Um, that being said, the next thing that you would want to decide on an inverter is whether you're going to be 12 volt, 24 volt, 48 volt, or some other volt. Um, 12 volt is fine for like your car or, 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 or portability or simplicity, light bulbs, things like that. But as soon as you start running inductive loads where you're taking power out of your inverter, you want to be probably at 24 volts. Um, now, the good thing about that is, is, is it, it runs more efficiently, but you're going to need twice as many batteries to do the same job as the 12 volt inverter. Uh, and that's another video for another day of talking about amperages and how amperages are cut in half by you know 12 volt, 24 volt, 48 volt inverters. If you're going to be using an inverter all of the time, every day, off grid, or to power your home or business, then my recommendation is going to be a 48 volt inverter. You're going to need four times the batteries as a 12 volt inverter but it's going to be much more efficient and everything is going to run at its true power. Um, so if you have a 10 amp device that draws 10 amps of current, let's say at 1000 watts, then it's going to just need that much power from that 48 volt inverter where when you step into 12 volt, it actually turns into 40 amps of, of draw that it actually needs. So uh, like I said, it's, that's a lot more confusing and, and we'll, we'll, we'll do that video for another day. But this video was basically just to tell you what's the best inverter for you how to understand the differences between a few different kinds of inverters and the differences between an inductive and a resistive load. So I hope this answered any of the questions that you might have. And uh, if you guys do have any questions or concerns, please put them in the comment section down below. In closing, I guess I should say, if you need any of these inverters that I sell or even our portable solar generators, be sure to go over to solargenny.com or over to westthattechguy.com to get the inverter of your choice, battery packs, battery power walls, uh, whatever you need, man, we've got them on the site. We've got a lot of new stuff coming in every day. So be sure to check those websites out. And as usual, man, be sure to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you on the next one.